Okay, now, um, in this video, I, I want to show you just how easy it is um, to get so much information from the periodic table. And so let's start defining this. When I did electron configurations, I learned this diagonal rule. You'll see it in a lot of books. And, and it wasn't until I was teaching that I really saw doing electron configurations from a periodic table. And it's so much more logical. So let's first identify these. So this is the S block. All of these elements will end in an S um, sublevel. This is the P block. All of these end in P. This is the D and this is the F. Stupid people die first. Okay, now if we number our periods, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and this comes out of six and seven. Now, what we find is for the S block, N is simply equal to the period number. So this would be 1s and 2s and 2, 3s and 4s and so on. For the p block, and this is s actually, this is 1s2. So the p block starts in the second period. All right, for the p block, n is equal to my period number. So this would be 2p and 3p and 4p and 6, 7p down here and so on. Okay, now for the D block, N is equal to the period number minus 1. Okay, so this would be 3D because it's the fourth period, go down by 1. Fifth period, go down by 1 for 4D and so forth. And for the F block, as we look at the F block, N is equal to the period number minus 2. So this is the sixth period, so that's going to be 4F and 5F. Okay, so it's kind of the overall structure. And man, I think this is going to hopefully make so much fall into place. So if I wanted to go to here, that's antimony. Let me write the electron configuration for that. Okay, so I, it's, you, you go in order like you would be reading a book. We always go left to right. I, I kind of think of it as a journey. So we're going to go left to right. We're going to go 1s1, 1s2. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? No. So 1s2. Then we start back here. We have 2s2. We cross the ravine, and we're in the 2p. So we fill the 2s2, and now we're into 2p. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're, we're trying to get all the way down here, so we're 2p6. Start over here, 3s2. Cross the ravine, and we're in the 3p block. Start off to the left. 4s2. Now watch what happens. When you get the d block, it's kind of like going down a hill. 3d. And you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 3d, 10. Now you go back up the hill and we're in the 4p block. 4p6. Okay. And then let me get myself a little bit more room here. I'll go through the F block in another one of my videos. And then after 4P6, we come back here. We're in the 5S2 block. Go down a hill, 4D10, all the way, 4D10. And now we're at the 5P, but we're not going to fill it up. We only go in one, two, three steps, 5P3. So that's how we'll be doing it, is literally just taking walks through the periodic table. Now, before I leave you, I want to point out something here. It's so nice what this shows. Well, how many electrons go into an S sublevel? One, two. So there's two electrons, which means there's one orbital. 
Remember I said you didn't, if you watch my other videos, I said you didn't have to memorize. The more you can conceptualize, the less you have to memorize. So now we've got the P block, six electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. As you go up an element, you're representing adding an electron. Six electrons divide by two, that means there's three orbitals in a P sublevel. Okay, now let's look at the D's. If you count those, you'll see there's 10 blocks representing 10 total electrons. Divide by two, that's five orbitals. F block, you have 14 electrons. Divide by two, that's seven orbitals in an F sublevel. So you don't have to memorize all that if you can conceptualize it on the periodic table. So I hope that helps you out. Um, I'll be doing more of these in other videos, um, but I love working with the periodic table. It'll lead into understanding the structure of atoms so much more effectively. Um, hope you enjoyed that little time of chemistry. Thanks lots. Bye-bye.